Alan Major of The Ohio State University is the new head men's basketball coach at UNC Charlotte. Ultimately, our goal is to try to stake our claim in the Atlantic 10. Thank you. Welcome inside Atkins Library into our television studios here at the University of North Carolina Charlotte for Campus Conversations. I'm Ryan Rose and we're here chatting with the new head men's basketball coach here at the University, Alan Major. Coach, welcome to, uh, to, to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And it's a pleasure to be here. That's kind of where I wanted to start. I remember um, at your opening speech, if, if I can refer to it as the opening speech, your inauguration, as it were, the press conference announcing your arrival here. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most interesting, I've never heard this before, and I've been on this planet quite a few years, <laughs> when you talked about when you started to think about the coaches in your life, and you started with your family, and it, it, it never hit me that that's just a true state. That's a true statement that I've ever heard that your family is your first coach. Yeah. And, and I wanted to bring that to to this area here. This is from from an outsider growing up in this area. Mm -hmm. I always knew UNC Charlotte is kind of a family atmosphere. Now, having worked here for four years, it truly is a family atmosphere. I wanted to get your thoughts on what do you think of our family at our community here and, and, and what it means to you to be at a place that is so close-knit. Uh, you know, it, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it is. Uh, you know, we talk about in recruiting sometimes, you know, every school is going to have great facilities and, you know, people having a, a kids having a great chance to get a great education, but um, not every place has the same people. Mm -hmm. And as I got to know Charlotte and, and Charlotte got to know me, um, that was the separator for me. I just kept feeling this pull of everybody being genuine. Uh, I felt incredible passion for the for the university. I don't know if there's a person that that loves UNC Charlotte more than Judy Rose. Uh, just completely exudes everything that you would want an athletic director to exude about a school. And, um, and people have just been great. People have been open arms, and and uh, it's a it's been a nice transition. She has a knack, I think, for finding guys who ha are, are rooted in family. And I know working with some of the coaches here, when they recruit guys, they talk about recruiting a family. We're not recruiting a player. We're recruiting a family person. We want to know that he's part of a, a part of a family and, and accepts people when they come. When he comes here, he's going to accept his teammates, his family. Absolutely. Talk about you and your family, and and how that kind of how you think maybe Judy handpicked you because of your values and the way you view your family. You know, I. I'm not sure uh, she's it just goes to show you her wizardry as an yeah. athletic director mm -hmm. um, how I my name came up uh, but I know just me personally growing up uh, that's my circle um, mm -hmm. you know my mom and dad uh, I, I literally meant that in the press conference those are my my first two coaches and and uh, literally the, the older I've gotten the smarter they've gotten right <laughs> <laughs> along the way and uh, uh, it, it, it it's you just have a connection, you know, it's such a vibe here with that. And I think, um, and, and I hired my assistants, I talked about the importance of mm -hmm. that, of, you know, all three guys, I know that they're good husbands and they're good dads. And um, you can't be a good coach if you're not a good husband and a good father. Right. Um, because everything you do at home is going to translate, you know, to how you treat our players. Mm -hmm. And uh, the three guys I have, I couldn't be happier about. And I know I lay in bed at night and I know that they're going to do the right thing and uh, that there is in the immediate this is day 17 I have a running count in my head yeah <laughs> and uh, I, in, in the two and a half weeks I've been here that it's a terrific feeling to know that you have people like that around you before we get to your assistant coaches what in the in those 17 days I know you've been to baseball games you've been to foundation events you've been to a lot of different things mm -hmm. uh, what are your impressions your first impressions of the UNC Charlotte community and the Charlotte community as a whole you know I, I would just say you know, uh, incredible pride, okay. uh, pride and, and passion. Um, you can feel it in every person's handshake. You know when that you meet. That's a, whether they're a donor or a fan, or, um, or even the students last night at the baseball game. I mean, their eyes are you know wide, and, and and they got the Niner Nation gear on. And I mean, you can just you really get this sense of people wanting this place to be special. They already know it's special, and they. They want to say, you know, hey, what can we, how can we make it even more special than it already is? And you literally feel that with everybody. And I know I have, you know, everyone, everyone I've been in contact with in this, this few weeks. But um, that right there, you know, to me, it, it kind of crystallizes the feeling. 
Now, uh, folks, you can check out the, the opening speech, opening remarks from Coach Major at charlotte49ers.com. We've got the whole press conference right there, and I'm kind of referring to some things that happened there. One question that was asked at that press conference you couldn't tackle, but now we can, are your assistant coaches. Now mm -hmm. you've had time. They've been able to uh, you know, sign contracts and make it legal and make it official. Yeah. Talk about the guys you have brought in and, and what they'll add to the staff this year. You know, uh, the first guy uh, I hired was uh, Orlando Vandross. Uh, Orlando was at Boston University for 13 years. And any time in college basketball, you're any place for double-figure seasons. Uh, that shows tremendous loyalty. Mm -hmm. And um, I know he's a guy that's going to bring great energy. He has a terrific grip of recruiting, especially in the Northeast, uh, even into the D.C. area a little bit. And, um, again, you know, uh, wife, two kids, just a solid guy in every single way, and uh, has shown unbelievable energy and, and, and commitment to our players just in a, a short time, and, and our guys feel them. You know, we always talk about, you know, make sure that the players feel, your, feel you and, and feel your sincerity. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ryan Odom is, is a, a, was the second assistant hired, the son of Wake Forest, uh, former coach Dave Odom, so it's clearly in his bloodlines and in right. his roots. Um, was at Virginia Tech for seven years. Again, you know, pushing a ten-year tenure at one school. Great loyalty. Um, uh, just a phenomenal grip of recruiting in the Carolina and Virginia areas. And uh, again, just solid uh, family guy. Great energy. Um, uh, he, he's kind of our thinker uh, okay. on the staff. You know, okay. has a little bit more of a low-key feel, but then he'll say something, and he's two steps ahead of everybody else. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and then the last guy I hired was Desmond Oliver. And uh, Desmond was at Canisius last year, but had also previously been with Dennis Felton at Georgia. And he was in that magical NCAA tournament run when right. Georgia won four games in literally three days. They had to play two games and in one day to finish a game due to the storm. Right. Yeah. So Desmond's been through literally some storms. Yeah. And he's dealt with culture change, and he's dealt with you know, being somewhere new. And, and uh, all, all three guys, I, I, I really couldn't be happier to have them. One thing that's amazing when you talk about college athletics in general, you bring guys in from all parts of the country. You, you, how you guys keep those personalities into one unit just amazes me year after year. And every team is different. Yeah. This year's team, minus one guy plus two guys, completely different, even if you're changing out a few guys. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you and all three of these assistant coaches who came from different parts of the country and mm -hmm. recruit different parts of the country and are used to different head coaches and systems. How in a short time have you guys been able to mesh as one unit? And that's just the first of many steps to come for you guys. Yeah, I think uh, it's in the conversations leading up to guys, you know, being hired, everyone knew each other, which helped. Yeah. You know, I knew Orlando. Orlando knew Ryan. Uh, Ryan knew Desmond. You know, Ryan knew Orlando. So mm -hmm. there was a somewhat of a common base that we had, which helped. Um, I think the thing we try to do in this first two weeks, you know, we just spend an inordinate amount of time together. Um, and some of it is you're talking business and you're talking about our current guys, you're talking about recruiting, mm -hmm. you're talking about basketball thoughts and just random. You know, there, there's sometimes a guy will come into the office and, and sit for a little bit and then the next two guys come in and, and then two hours later we're still sitting there just because it becomes a random brainstorming. Thing. Right. Um, but. Uh, and we've also just laughed a lot. I mean, we, you, you know, we're all kind of the same age, so you know, guys are cracking jokes about movies and '80s music, and and so you know, we've got a good balance of of being able to work together and coexist, uh, but also knowing that you know we've got a, a great challenge ahead, and and uh, all th all f all four of us know, hey, you know, at the end of the day, we, we it's the most important thing is being on the same page. Now, probably your your job is two, three times more difficult because you're coming into a bunch of players that you had really didn't know about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So talk about in these first couple of weeks. Now, my office sits over the practice gyms. You guys have been working it, you know, just working it down there. <laughs> talk about the process as you, it, it's sort of like you're recruiting the guys that are here. You're, you're learning them and they're learning you. Yeah. What's that process been like? And I know it's not even close to being finished yet, but as you begin, well, how's that process unfolded it's for a, you? It's a great point. Um, it's, it's brick by brick, mm -hmm. you know, is what, how you have to go about it. And I think the most important thing we've tried to do, that started with me, but our assistants now have all trickled down and they're doing it with our players individually is, is just the relationship building part. Mm -hmm. um, you know, guys feeling like they can come in and if, if 
they need to shut the door, great. If they just want to plop down and crack jokes, great. If basketball comes up, that's great. If basketball doesn't come up, that's great. But um, we've really tried to overemphasize that we, we care about you in more ways, number one, than you realize, and, and also beyond the basketball aspect of it. Um, you know, how many brothers and sisters do you have? You know, what's your major? At basketball end of the day, where do you see yourself going? And so uh, just making sure that they know that, is, you know, basketball is obviously a big chunk of what we have to do, but it's not a grind 24-7 and that we can have a laugh and then we can joke about a, a movie line or, or something like that or that you can come in and say, hey, you know, some of my family's not feeling well and I got this in my head, coach. You know, can I let it out? So I, it's, we really try to emphasize talking, not just talking family, but living family, and our staff sets the tone for that. And it is, as we coexist as a staff, and we're unselfish, and we help each other out, and we roll our sleeves up, and no job's too small, then maybe, just maybe, that mindset trickles down into our team. How long does it take, this is kind of off topic, but along the same vein, how long does it take as you guys, because your process is not just learning them, but they have to figure out, you guys together have to figure out what kind of basketball team you're going to end up being. When does, when does that stop? I know you've worked a lot on the court with individuals yeah. and with groups, but well, how, how does that integrate into all the other things you guys are doing right now? And I don't want to ask you about you know, what kind of plays you're going to run, sure, but, no, but how much basketball are you able to get in on this early stage? Because I know you're learning them, not just individuals, but at what their individual uh, athletic abilities are too. It seems right. like a lot to sort of take in. It's like you're cramming for an exam, <laughs> and they have exams at the same time. I mean, they're coming up against the end of the school year. Here. Absolutely, yeah. The good thing is the real exams don't start till November. Right, right. <laughs> so we got a little bit of time, but you know we get we get two hours per week. Actually, today's the last day that we get time on the court with them mm -hmm. until school starts. So we've been able to do some things on the floor, but uh, we've also each coach in his own way have started watching film of last year's okay. games, and not that that gives you everything, but at least gives you a feel, mm -hmm. uh, strengths, weaknesses, both individually and as a team. And as you mold that into kind of our mindset as a staff of, okay, here's some things that we can do well, here's what we need to Im improve on. So over the next month, month and a half, we're just kind of slowly working through game by game of, of last season. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of our homework sure. right now. The guys okay. have theirs, like yeah. you mentioned, and that, that's ours. So uh, and then we'll all, you know, they'll get out of here for a little bit and then they'll come back in the summer and, and start their, you know, conditioning and, and things of that nature. It's funny, people think basketball season starts, you know, on Midnight Madness, you know, Niner Madness here in the middle of October, that that's the first day that you guys ever see each other for the year. And it's a 12-month process. Yeah. Uh, what stage are the guys in at this time of year? You talk about the two hours a week, but I'm sure on the side they're lifting, mm -hmm. they're doing the other things. What are some of the things players do in the quote-unquote off-season, which there really is no off-season? If you ask a coach, there's yeah. an off-season, he says, there's no way. It's all season, but... What are the guys doing at this point, and what are you guys able to do uh, on your own when you when you aren't allowed to see the players? Yeah, the the guys right now um, with the two hours per week uh, skill workout ending this week, they'll they'll hone in and focus on finals. They can play pickup games on their own, sure. which we're not allowed to observe. Right. Uh, they can lift weights um, with our strength coach, and um, that's going to basically carry in out through the end of finals week. They'll get some time off. And when they come back for the summer, uh, right now the NCAA hasn't allowed coaches to do anything with players in the summer. Okay. It's been on the table to possibly be passed. Um, I don't know if it's going to make it. Uh, a lot of people think because of the Michigan situation right. with football that it could be abused. And, and, right. and now, you know, do student athletes approach burnout and things of that nature? So I think they're very being very careful with the summers. So... We have to basically now place great faith in the guys to continue on in the summer what we've been doing in the spring okay. because it is on a voluntary basis and, and you're not allowed to instruct or chart or record or anything like that. Okay. So, And then in the fall, we'll be able to start back up again uh, with two hours per week with workouts. Is that enough time, the two hours a week? I mean, for if, if, if you'd had these guys for three years and you know them and they know you and they know what you expect of them and... They know what they can expect of you. It's a different story, but right. 
I mean, it seems like a short amount of time for you guys to yeah. get to know each other. Because in the, in the, during the season, you're going to spend a lot of time together, traveling, Absolutely. practice, games, things like that. But it just doesn't seem like you get enough time to do the things you want to do. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I was telling someone yesterday, if there was ever a summer where I wish they would pass yeah. the rule, <laughs> it was this year. Yeah. And so now we could just continue on with these guys because, you know, individual meetings are great. And, you know, how's your family? How's your brothers and sisters? That's, that's great. Um, but the court is the guy's domain, and mm -hmm. that's their space. Right. And for us as coaches, it's the best chance for them to really feel the message that we're trying to send. And it's been great in this few weeks, you know, because when you get in there, again, it's a chance to, like you said, recruit your own team. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's the best chance to get them to feel the message that you're trying to send in terms of the skill stuff and intensity levels and, and the pace and tempo, how you want to do things. But, and now it's, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, um, but it's one of those things we'll have to manage it and, and uh, hopefully school will get here quickly so we can jump yeah. back in there with them again. It's, like you may, it's almost like you have to start over again with that process because you'll lose some time. I know the guys will be around, but the, yeah. the, the time you're supposed to be allowed to have with them. Absolutely. That's something that I guess people don't, don't consider that when a player steps on the floor or comes to school for you, you've mm -hmm. actually been talking to them for weeks, months, you know, Absolutely. the recruiting process, and that's something you miss out with these guys is that time with them and their families and their homes and Absolutely. seeing them. So that's Absolutely. that makes this a little bit more uphill than I guess people realize. Yeah, it, it has. And, and uh, you know, as a staff, though, we're, we're trying to enjoy that challenge, you know, because there's two ways you can look at it. You can say, wow, you know, this is a insurmountable, you know, will we ever catch up? Right. You know, uh, but then you can look at it the other way of, of small victories. And if you have a day where you feel a little bit better about a guy in terms of your relationship with him than you did the day before. That at, the, at midnight that day or whenever we leave the office, we'll take that and, and now tomorrow we'll bring what it's going to bring. Or if a guy skill-wise does something this week that he didn't do particularly well last week or he just feels an inch better about it, we'll take it. Nice. So, um, I, you know, because you can always look at the mountain and, and say, wow, you know, are we ever going to get there? But, you know, our thing is, hey, just, just deal with the next step and then let, that, let the next step take you where it's going to take you. Now, let's, let's touch on recruiting. Um, when you move, and you've done this before, you've moved from one school to another. It happens as, as a coach matures and gets better to his profession. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that you and your staff face moving from there, wherever areas you're from, to here? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I know learning North Carolina is going to be vitally important, but yeah. you still have inroads at other places, as do the other assistants. What are yeah. some of the unique challenges that you face when you move to a new area in recruiting? I think the biggest one is the, the timing because the, the recruiting process has accelerated so much mm -hmm. and there was a time where kids would just kind of go through their junior year and then they you know get through that summer and then the start of their senior year they would say okay here's my five schools or seven schools let me narrow it down and then I make a decision around October that was before the information age right. kicked in mm -hmm. of you know Twitters and tweets and you know chat rooms and, and uh, you know such and such dot com recruiting reports and anything. <laughs> right. So now the access of information that kids are able to get, uh, it's changed. And so it's sped the process up. And so anymore, if you haven't gotten in on a guy by the end of his sophomore year, maybe even the start of his junior year, you're going to be in a little bit of an uphill battle. And this change, it's no one's fault, but what it is is now we've come in at the end of kids' end of kids' junior year. Right. And a lot of them have kind of narrowed it down. Uh, some kids have made decisions. So now the biggest challenge is, is busting down some doors and, you know, coming through some back windows and saying, hey, look, you know, you got to give Charlotte a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, we just got here. And so uh, so that part, we, you know, the feedback's been good. You know, some kids have kind of are down the line, and that's understandable, but that's probably the single biggest challenge is trying to make up for ground in terms of the process. Now, working with uh, the gentlemen you've brought in, all the coaches that you're working with, and they have obviously – places where they're more comfortable and people are more comfortable with them already. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does that work when you, when you gather a new staff and you have new inroads, you know, yeah. places that you haven't ever recruited? One of your assistants knows guys, knows, mm -hmm. you know, coaches, knows high schools. 
How does that work when you move to a new place? Do you have a war room? Do you guys chat about, well, we've talked with these guys? Or yeah. uh, in, in such a short time, you don't really have time to catch up on every little nugget that That's you'd true. like to because of the short window. How, how does that all work between you and your staff? Uh, fast food and late night. <laughs> 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 but now, um, you know, the thing we really try to do is, is, is put some footholds down in Charlotte. Okay. In, in the first, you know, little period that we had. Uh, right now, we're in a you can't go off campus right now right. until July. So we had a little stretch there of six days where we were able to just locally, um, you know, go and shake some hands and see some people and, uh, and just let them know, hey, you know, we'd like Charlotte to be a situation where uh, if we have to say no to a kid because we can't take them or the circumstances isn't, aren't right, that's great. It, it happens. But um, we definitely don't want Charlotte to be a place where a kid says, I, you know, I'd rather not go there because they never gave me a look. You know, at least you give that outreach part is important and right. letting high school coaches know that, you know, they can come and they can, uh, whether it's watch practice or give us a call on the phone and talk basketball. I think just that local outreach was, was really huge in that early part of the stage. But moving on to your question, I think um, that's where I really enjoy our staff because none of these guys have that territorial mentality of, well, you know, it'd be like Orlando saying, I recruited in the Northeast. You know, I got to make sure I get a Northeast guy here because that's my guy and all that. Right. You know, I, I want Ryan in the Northeast. I want, you know, Orlando and Carolina. And I want Desmond up north and Ryan in, in Georgia and in areas that Desmond's been. So mm -hmm. that balance and that sharing, again, it's that same thing we talked about. If we can do that and exude that, then, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll trickle down to our team. You've talked uh, at, at the press conference about, you know, some, some guys at Ohio State were attributed to you, and you said, uh, you kind of downplay that. You said, I don't want to be, this is my guy because right. what happens if such and such. So yeah. h how have you and the staff sort of attacked that? And, and I want to just get your thoughts on some of the guys that you've been able to bring in at other schools and how that works, how your name gets attached to that guy. And, and it's not, yeah. you know, he's not coming to play for this particular coach. Right. He's coming to the team. Exactly. He's coming to the program. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the most important thing is, you know, I've told these guys, and even in the hiring process before bringing them in, what my thoughts were about that. And uh, I just said, hey, you know, we're all going to coach the guy when he gets here. So we're all going to participate in the process of trying to get him here. Mm -hmm. So that way, uh, when a guy comes, he's got a relationship with each coach. Uh, if, a, you know, if a guy goes on to leave or get a head coaching job or move on from Charlotte, the kid still feels comfortable with the guys that are remaining right as opposed to well that's the only coach i talked to <laughs> let me go with him to his new school yeah. which happens yes everywhere yes um but the thing in ohio state we tried to do is really tried to share it and make sure that you know um uh, you know when we wrote letters you know kid got different you know got letters from different coaches uh or as you share the phone calls as best you can there's always a point guy or a lead guy mm -hmm. um in particular with a kid, but, um, you know, we, we, we're trying to go the selfless route because that mentality in college basketball uh, is, is somewhat rampant, and it is what it is, but uh, my personally, I, I'd like to do things a little different. Mm -hmm. And uh, and maybe a, a kid once in a while that if he's getting that from all other schools and then maybe we're the one school that he hears three coaches on the speakerphone right. talk one night, maybe that hits him a little different and it strikes a chord with the parent or a kid, and now that, sometimes that can be the difference maker. Nice. Well, that kind of leads me into one of our last questions about your philosophy. I know this was asked of you at the press conference, but mm -hmm. um, that seems like uh, something you have pulled in from different places. Uh, and, and when you have a, a collection of new coaches that you work with, guys that you know, but now you are staffed together, mm -hmm. talk about some of the influences maybe that you've had in your life and, and people who you've pulled nuggets from to create your own personal philosophy. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'd say my high school coach uh, was the one that told me, hey, when you go to Purdue and you try to walk on, if that doesn't happen, you know, you got to swallow your pride, leave your pride in your dorm or whatever it is and see if you can do something on a daily basis to be a part of Coach Katie's program. So it started with him and then obviously Gene Katie himself um, probably – I, I stole, I'm probably one of the greatest thieves of <laughs> philosophy in basketball, but uh, his meat and potatoes – uh, just being the same guy every day, you know, uh, of defense, of fundamentals, of your team, having a, a, a mentality 
uh, and, and, and I don't know, guys, that today they call it a swagger, but okay. uh, of having an identity about yourselves as a team and, and just being tough. You know, being competitors and being tough. And Coach Katie was just a small, you know, town guy from Kansas that fought his way through the ranks and, and was a head coach at a Big Ten school for 25 years. Yeah. Uh, coach Mata uh, has a touch, uh, just phenomenal touch with people and understanding that, you know, there was a time when a coach said, jump, 12 players said, how high and how long you want me to stay in the air? Right, right. You know, and now, <laughs> you, you know, you say jump and the kid says, okay, how high, but what's in it? for me and why will it benefit me mm -hmm. and that's just how kids have changed right part of society but coach Mata has a, a great feel of knowing that each guy has a, a different button located in a different area and he had a great feel for really trying to find out where that button is and some buttons need to be punched some buttons need to be just slightly touched mm -hmm. uh, just a, a great gift as a head coach and also letting his assistants have responsibility and, and delegating and letting them work and all the while, he's teaching you how to make decisions on your own and stand by them. Uh, Bob Thomason from Pacific, I'd say fundamentals and the ability of, uh, of shooting the basketball uh, as a team. You know, how important shooting the basketball is and how no matter what type of team you have, always make sure guys have great confidence in their ability to, to shoot the ball to their range. Some guys it's three, some guys it's 12 feet, whatever it is. Um, you know, Bruce Weber, very similar to Gene Cady, was a year with him a year at Southern Illinois, and almost like a Cady disciple. Okay. You know, defense, fundamentals, teamwork, um, don't be afraid of a floor burn, you know, right. uh, that type of thing. So I, I've i been so lucky. Um, Mike Dunlap's another unknown guy that was uh, I work with at Division Three okay. in California Lutheran. Right. Again, another just a, a fiery guy, intensity, the importance of sweating with the guys. Mm -hmm. Don't just be a guy that stands on the sideline during practice, but, you know, sweat with them. You know, be a part of it. You know, show great energy and bring that same energy every day. Don't ever have a, don't ever have a day when you're not on. Okay. So all those guys have kind of contributed to my, they, their recipes have contributed to my stew <laughs> yeah. a little bit, and I've, I've been fortunate. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, the, the fruits of that broth as it comes forth <laughs> this coming season. I know there's a lot of work left to be done, but we really hopefully you don't feel like you've been grilled here, but we hope the no. fans have had a chance to kind of kind of get to know you a little bit. And I know Thank we're going to get to know you roving the sidelines this coming year uh, for Charlotte. We're very excited to have you here. Thank you. And uh, hopefully you feel welcome. Are you having fun yet? Has this been fun? I am. Yeah, I, at the end of the day, you know, when we go home at night, we all kind of laugh as coaches and say, you know what? Uh, we get to do exactly what we love to do. And is it, uh, you know, or pressure and intensity level and all that involved? Yeah, it is, but, you know, we, we kind of internalize it and let's, let's put more pressure on ourselves than anyone else could ever do. But at the end of the day, if somebody says you get to do what you love uh, every single day, to me that's, the, that's the, one of the best gifts you can have. Welcome to Charlotte. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. That's head coach Alan Major. I'm Ryan Rose. Thanks for watching this episode of Campus Conversations, meeting head coach Alan Major.